Thank you for joining me today. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra, for the Simply Financial Podcast. This is season number four, episode number 19. So today's guest is my very, very good friend, Jeffrey Sherman. He is a public educator. He's an adjunct professor at the collegiate level. He's a longtime radio host. In fact, he and I hosted a radio show called The Business Buzz for, I don't know, a long time. Uh, later on, it uh, morphed into something called, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, what was it called, Jeff? The new show? It was called Carnivore Radio. Carnivore Radio. And you host your own podcast right now, also called Carnivore, uh, Carnivore. Radio. Yes. So, um, well, I wanted to have you on, Jeff. We've talked about this on air. Um, also, I'll mention we did a TV show for a while, a local cable access TV show. Wasn't that fantastic? Yeah, I know. I would like to I go love back that to that, TV. by the way. Oh, I'd love to do that. Awesome. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. So on and off the year, over these many years we've known each other, uh, we've talked about resilience in a lot of different frameworks. And with the environment we find ourselves in today, this country with the pandemic, the shutdown, the economic dislocation, a lot of people finding themselves unemployed, furloughed, um, making less money, and then there's other people that are everyday American heroes going to work and having to take on some risk with the pandemic. Uh, people at grocery stores, truck drivers, it's just an incredible time. So I wanted to just kind of have a conversation with you about um, resilience. I guess first and Chris, off... Um, you mentioned something that really kind of hit me, and you're talking about people being unemployed and that like resonated with me because I'm thinking and to me it's just it, it's uncanny that people probably were never ever doing better than they were right now I mean three four months ago and just to have that situation people looking at many job offers looking at gainful employment you know we talked about this in the business buzz ten years ago about people that maybe were dislocated workers, older, you know, um, other, other situations, and now are back in and to have it all fall apart. To me, that is unbelievable, Chris. It is unbelievable. And it came out of left field, you know, the pandemic, the shutdown, the quarantine, the voluntary sidelining of many businesses and industries, large and small, it's, it's unprecedented, of course. And it is putting a lot of strain on people worrying about the pandemic, worrying about their finances, worrying about their job, the uncertainty for a lot of people, especially those that are prone to maybe depression or, ebbs and flows in their life. This is very, very trying. And for far too many of our fellow citizens, they will also feel isolated through this. I'm blessed. You know, I'm home with my wife and two children. My aunt is actually staying with us. Uh, I'm, I'm luckier than most. Um, so resilience is, I think, super important today. And if you have the ability to be resilient, um, you're going to come out of this way better than people that struggle with resiliency. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. But you know something? You mentioned something that is really a key point. It depends what your situation is, Chris. I really believe, you know, financially if you're all set, employment, right, vocationally if you're all set, a family all set, you're going to be, you're okay. I mean, you know, it's okay. If you're not in that situation, this can be debilitating. Yeah. Yeah. You bring up a good point. And you know, my work um, as a certified financial planner, working with individuals, talking about their finances, their goals, things that have worked for them, things that have not worked. I find that, you know, there's some things you could do on the money side of things to help with resiliency. Not that, Money is the end all to be all. We can all agree that health, family, there are other things more important. But in the realm of money, you know, having an emergency fund, people that are going through this episode and they have an emergency fund, which would be defined as having some money in the bank 
that's not at risk in the markets, not in a 401k, not in a college fund, but is just money in the bank, that lends itself to resiliency because that emergency fund lends itself to having a little bit of peace. That if the grocery bills are a little high or if maybe you have an investment property and you're not going to collect the rents one month, that you have some shock absorbers in your financial plan that you have cash on hand and that's one little neat trick to help cultivate resiliency in a financial plan but it crosses over into your mental well-being because it provides some peace and security and I know in my house you know we have a healthy emergency fund it stinks that it virtually earns no interest today because of this incredible interest rate environment we live in. But I do have some money there, so if my business slows down or uh, the utility bills are a little higher because we're home more, whatever, that I have some money that I could grab in a pinch, that helps. What do you think about that? I think it's really important. I think it's important to have safety nets in many areas, financial, emotional, um, you know, connections in your life. I think it's going to test many things, financial and emotional. Um, and, you know, Chris, to me, it's really important, beyond important, to me, it's like how this evolves. If this is a long-term protracted engagement, then um, I really don't know the answer, Chris. I don't know how people endure. If it's, if, if people see this situation getting better, not resolved, but better like July, August, I think that's different. I think people's emotional state, financial state would be much better. But if things come back or if they resurrect themselves in states that maybe launch too early, you know, all that kind of stuff, the stock market collapse, you know, all these kinds of things, I think it's going to play heavily on people's state of mind Chris yeah yeah I think yeah. Um, I mean I think it's like if this thing starts resolving itself in June and then July I think people are going to have a much better emotional and you know emotional state I think if it's um, going to go on for September you know with no end in sight I think people's resilience are going to be tested Chris Sure. I think everybody's resiliency has sort of like a gas tank and some people have a bigger tank that maybe empties more slowly, but everyone has a limit to resiliency. And I like to think that I'm a pretty resilient person, yet I read as a history buff, you know, people that have gone through world wars and the Holocaust and um, major health issues with themselves or loved ones, I, you know, I'm probably not as resilient as I think. I've lived a charmed, blessed life. Uh, everyone has a tank and everybody can be pushed to the limit. And in this episode, a lot of people are getting pushed to the, the limit. Another thing I'll say on the financial front is having a good balance sheet in your household money-wise. I would not want to go through this episode as difficult it is if I had lots of debt and was very leveraged either in my business or in my personal life uh, you know people that have a hundred thousand dollars of student loans and a car they can't afford and a mortgage where you know they don't have much margin for error I think that also makes it tougher on the resiliency gas tank because that's very stressful and I've talked to a lot of people and folks that are financially fit where they have some assets and either no debt or a modest amount of debt, they look at things differently than folks that are over leveraged because that puts them in a much trickier position. Can you appreciate how that I can having a lot of debt would stretch out? Take, oh yeah, and I can talk to that firsthand. I was in debt years ago and I have no debt now, and it is a completely different scenario. When you have debt, I don't even want to go there in terms of your outlook on it. God forbid if you know, we're in this kind of a situation and you have debt, I can't imagine that. I mean, and depending upon what kind of a vocation you have, if you're 
working for corporate America. I mean, if you're vulnerable, I, I, you know, this is really an awful situation. And, you know, you can talk about, oh, this person didn't do that or didn't do the other thing. But life unfolds. And sometimes you can be caught shorthanded, meaning you're putting two kids through college and you've always been responsible. But now, yeah, you have some debt. You have college loans. You have these different things. You built an extension on your house. You didn't really think, who knew this was going to happen? So even, I'll use the term, innocent people have been caught in the lurch. Yes. No, that's, that's very well said. I mean, you had, and this is what you said at the top of the show, uh, there are many instances of individuals, small businesses, and large businesses, could be any number of categories, that were making good decisions, participating in a really good economy that was accelerating, participating in a wonderful jobs market, and through no fault of their own, the government basically asked them to stand down, close down, and stay home. It's tough enough being an entrepreneur and a small business owner where there's all kinds of things that could upset the apple cart. I mean, there's risks all over, competition, regulation, you know, making good hiring decisions. There's just an unimaginable amount of things for an entrepreneur or a business owner to think about. And now we have to add on to the list the possibility that the government says, we want you to close your doors, we want you to go home, and we'll tell you when you could come back. Well, and that's the whole thing about the uncertainty, Chris, is if it's a protracted period of time, I mean – you know, that, that's one thing. I mean, if this thing goes on forever, we, we, don't, we all don't know the answer. And anyone who thinks they know the answer is lying because either this could be a horrible four-month episode or it could go on for a long time. Sure. And there's, and there's, so, that, that, there's so much unknown. Yes. And I think that's a, a, a key to how people get through it. And I think you're right about the financial part. I think emotionally, having a good family, having good friends. Yeah, that's really important. Absolutely. But, I mean, I know someone that got laid off, I don't know, six months ago. And no fault of her own. It just things happen, okay? And I didn't really feel that bad for her. I mean, you know, six months ago, and then two months later, she's in a situation where I, I couldn't even imagine being un Can you imagine, Chris, being unemployed in this market? Uh, you know, it's always it's always difficult to be unemployed. Uh, now, yeah, a few months no ago, what. we had a wonderful market. It was probably easier in the job market than previously, but now you're in a position where all of all of the tools that you would normally bring to the table: networking, meeting people for coffee, going to trade meetings, interviewing in person. All of that stuff is wiped away. I mean, you basically are disarmed in the traditional sense from getting out there and hustling to try and make something happen. And, and you know, Chris, I liked what you said, though, about, you know, it's kind of an ancillary topic, but I still believe that's how you get a job. You know, we've had experts on, we had the business buzz about, you know, the perfect resume for online jobs. I was never a big believer in that. I do believe it's how what you just said, how you really get a job. And you're right. That's all taken away. I mean, online is online. That's a crapshoot. That's what sure. one out of every hundred might even go to an interview. Um, all the tools that smart job seekers would use, they're gone. Sure. So it, no, it's, it, it's just. No, and I was going to say that, you know, through this episode, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm very blessed, but you know, it's been a test for me. Uh, you know, my business has been hurt by this. My clients who I serve, uh, you know, have participated in markets that have uh, performed badly. And there's so much uncertainty and fear. Um, it's, it's a very troubling time. And on the home front, you know, my aunt is a widow, lives in New York City. She has come and stayed with us. My father, I think you know, was undergoing mm -hmm. chemo during this episode. So that normally is pretty darn scary. And then you yes. overlay on top of that the worry over him getting coronavirus and having a compromised immune system. My mom can't see him. Um, when he's in chemo, she has to stay outside. Um, you know, it's been troubling. But 
I think I'm pretty resilient, but I, I've had some dark days through this period, and I've had some long nights, hmm. and it's difficult. I think I wanted to talk and get your thoughts about some ways that you could cultivate resiliency. And one of the ones that I wanted to, to use first, although it might not be as obvious as some others, is uh, I'm an avid reader. I like to read history. I read business <laughs> books. I read a lot of different things. But, you know, I find reading history or business books helps with my resiliency because, as an example, I just finished a book by Sam Zell. I don't know if you recognize that name, but he's worth about $6 billion, a very successful real estate investor and, and has invested in lots of other businesses. And he's an older gentleman now, 77, 78. But this was his autobiography. But listening to this successful billionaire speak about the times when he made good decisions and things were good and times when his business was threatened, where he had a liquidity crisis, where he made mistakes, I find that to help with my personal resiliency because it's a little bit like, look at this person, he's a model, and you think that at first glance, maybe he just went from zero to six billion with no interruptions. But there are lots of interruptions, setbacks, obstacles, mistakes, good periods and bad periods. And that helps me keep my eye forward with the idea that if I just keep working, try and be a good person, stay true to myself, that I'll get through this. And that helps with my resiliency, just having that framework of what others have gone through, often through the reading of books. How does that strike you? Actually, yes. I actually saw a show, Time Flies, 15 years ago. It was like on the Discovery Channel. It sounds weird. But there were three components of people. They were talking about natural disasters, people that have been in avalanches. And I forgot the two of them, but one of them always, I'll always remember. And people that get through stuff like that have a belief this too shall pass. So yes. if you're in an avalanche and you think, oh, my God, I'm never going to get out of this, that's your mindset. And that could lead to, if you're in an avalanche, of just packing it in. If you're in this, you could go into a tailspin of depression. I mean, all of this is... So you got to understand, and, and I think that's key because I've learned that from other people. We've learned that on the business buzz that life is, is, is like a cardiac machine. You know, it's up and down, okay? Yeah. And you got to, it's true, and you've got to understand that. And if you don't, then you need, to, you need to understand that because that's what everyone goes through, ups and downs. And if you don't get focused and if you don't get immersed in the down, you'll you'll get through the you'll get to the ups. But it's all about that resiliency and saying, Okay, I've been, you know, around forty, fifty, sixty, seventy or whatever the time is, and we'll get through this. I do think it's also about connections as well though. You know, I think I think if you're I think here's one of the positives. Let's state that. A true positive, an amazing positive is going to be that I believe, I truly believe that relationships that are great or good are going to transform to great. Relationships that might have been struggling are, might even, I, th I believe, are going to move to the good column because I think people are going to appreciate what they have. No, I, I, I think that's that. a good point. And, and w one way to cultivate relationship is to lean on your relationships, uh, whether it is a uh, family member, friends, coworkers. Um, I can tell you even, Jeff, that I'll add in that category um, my clients. This is an extraordinarily difficult time. I've been in the business 28 years, and I've never gone through something like this. Nobody has, right? And, you know, some of the things that we're trying to sort through is above my pay grade. I, don't, I mean, candidly, I'm a certified financial planner. I'm well-trained. I got a great skill set. But I don't know much about pandemics and death rate models and infection rates and therapeutics and creation of antibodies. I, it's, it's, um, some of this is literally above my pay grade. And in speaking with my clients, Jeff, 
I have been unbelievably touched and it has fueled my personal resiliency that I call clients in this difficult time because that's what I'm supposed to do as the financial planner, as the professional, and they show nothing but kindness to me. You know, how are you doing, Chris? How is your family doing? Um, yeah, but I think it's a reflection on you. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on your show. <laughs> I know you. No. But no, if you, if you were thought of as just the financial guy without a heart, people wouldn't do that. It'd be all just business, so to speak. Well, well that, is, it, it, that it, is a high compliment. It, that is uh, it, it's a true compliment because I think it's true that people know that you're not only good at what you do financially, but you do have a heart and you do care about them. And that's why they reach out. If it was all just about the balance sheet, and performance and ratios, then they'd be, hey, what's no. this, that, and the other thing? What? So I think that does speak volumes. Yeah. And um, so leaning, leaning on your relationships could definitely help. And, and I know I've tried to keep in touch with, you know, my family and friends, and others have done that for me. And, again, I'm lucky because I do have loved ones in the house. Not everybody does. Everyone's situation is a little different. But, you know, to help with resiliency is to lean on your friends and not that – I am a, a therapist, but, you know, if you're having a dark day, if you're struggling, if you're stressed out, um, reach out to someone, you know. Um, it, it, I'm reaching out is key because no one can go through everything alone. Yes. You, need to have, you need to have a network of friends. You need to have a, some way because – I'm in the dark note that suicide rates and people don't realize that yet. Yeah, the, uh, you know, the pandemic is a pandemic, but you look at alcoholism, depression, suicide, it's skyrocketing now. And I think people need to address that. You need to take care of, if you're, if you're feeling blue, you need to call someone, your friend, family, reach out to loved ones. Don't, you know, don't have that thick up, you know, thick skin and say, Oh, I'm just going to, you yeah. know, tough this out because it's not that easy. Absolutely. Um, no, that's a good point. And I think um, in the financial realm, too, and I think this uh, transcends to other areas of our lives, you know, is, is to have a plan on what you want to accomplish. And even though the plan you had just a few weeks and months ago might need radical changing, um, you know, having a plan of what you, wanted to, uh, what you want to accomplish, whether it's relationally, um, things that you want to have done around the house, what you want to do with your business, when you want to retire, uh, an amount of money that you want to accumulate, whatever is to have a plan, um, I think is helpful because that can assist with going through some of just the short-term crap that we're going through is if you do have an eye towards what's the greater good on the other side of this. I think that is also a way financially as well as other areas of our lives that you could help cultivate resiliency by um, having some plans on what you're trying to accomplish, especially in key areas of your life, which oftentimes includes financial. Agreed 100%, Chris. And then on the flip side, and I'm looking at this now, I am hesitant to say this because I may come off as a little bit of a dork um, of course, if Joelle, my wife, was on the call, she would fully acknowledge that I'm a dork all the time, is that um, it's been difficult for me work-wise. You know, I'm, I'm at the office by myself. I can't see my clients. I, Jeff, went through the aftermath of September 11th. It was such a scary time. And the great financial crisis with the failure of great companies like AIG and Lehman Brothers but this time is different because of the isolation, you know, business isolation. Now, I can't see my clients. I can't host a dinner, sit across yep. from someone, shake their hand, look them in the eye. So it's, it's different than those other episodes. So I, I've had some tough days, but I have a note on my desk, on a, it's just a little post-it, um, and it says, win the day. And what I just try and focus on, there's a lot going on, some of it's outside of my control, but when I come in the office and I'm focused on my business and helping my clients, I simply want to win the day when I go home to my family that I want to be able to say, did I win the day? Did I accomplish some good today for 
my clients, from me, from my business. And even though I like the long-term plan kind of thing, I was getting a little overwhelmed with just all that was going on. It was a little too awesome a project at certain times, at yep. certain moments, and just saying, I'm going to win the day. I'm going to have a good day today. And that could take, you know, different, that could mean different things to different people in different situations, but just, I'm going to win the day has helped me through some of these more difficult days and weeks we've had. How do, how do you, what do you think about that? Am I a dork? No, I think that's, you're not a dork. I think you just take one day at a time and yeah. uh, just get through the day. Have a good day. I, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good version of, of that. So as we begin to um, wrap up, any other thoughts about cultivating resiliency or your views having been- I think resiliency is all about reaching out to other people. Yeah. Don't believe anything you hear. No one goes it alone. And if you're alone, reach out to friends, family, what have you. If you have a family, if you have a significant other or significant others, then appreciate them. And I think that's all that, that makes all the difference. Well, and I also, think I- like you said, have a good financial plan too. Have make sure that um, yes, if, you, if you're financially secure or, or at least not in a in, in a dire situation, that's going to sure. help you get through it too. Because my God, the emotional plus you add the financial strain could break anyone. No, absolutely. In the financial realm, the role of the financial planner is to work in partnership with their clients, and that's what my team and I do here, Jeff, is that, you know, with the resiliency, when you're, you, when you're worried or struggling about the money part of things, if you work with a financial planner, you can call, we could do remote meetings, and we could talk through those things, and to make plans, make adjustments, talk things through, that I could help my clients with their resiliency because it might not be as bad as what they're thinking about and sometimes just hashing stuff out either in writing or verbally will, will help reduce stress and increase peace. And that's the role of a financial planner, especially in difficult times. Uh, And then, you know, you might have, you know, other times when you reach out to a spouse or your best friend or brother, mother, father, son, daughter, but uh, we do have to stick together. And uh, Jeff, I really enjoyed the discussion. I miss our Likewise. radio show because uh, oh, it was God. great kicking around these ideas together today. Oh, it was fantastic. And uh, let's not forget about the TV show. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk offline. In the meanwhile, listeners, uh, you could find out more information about uh, my work and the work that my team at Elliott Wealth does by going to our website, www.elliotwealth.com, elliotwealth.com, and you could get, uh, you could contact us through there. You could see other episodes of the Simply Financial podcast. By the way, in thinking about the podcast, please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will be back with you on the next episode of the Simply Financial podcast very soon. Thank you. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Sage Point Financial Incorporated and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note, the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of the information provided at these websites, nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to your use of third-party technologies websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. Securities and advisory services are offered through Sage Point Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management, LLC, not affiliated with Sage Point Financial.